topic nuclear decay it shows how the particles can decay and in this topic you will learn about calculating the binding energy energy with needed to bind the nucleons within the nucleus that's called a binding energy so first thing nuclear decay what happened as we know the size of a nucleus the size of a nucleus is in a range of a femtometer it's very small like example 10 is power minus 15 of the meter as a result what happened when the nucleus is having the particles such as neutron and proton this nucleus is unable to hold these particles inside because like charges repel so there is a greater mass and greater charge repulsion is there that it's not able to hold so if the nucleus is not able to hold these particle inside what will happen as a result this nucleus will become unstable and as a result as this nucleus will become unstable how it can gain the stability by either emitting out the particle or energy so when the nucleus is emitting out two protons and two neutrons from the nucleus that are coming out we call alpha when an electron is coming out it's called beta and beta can be two types it can be electron or anti anti electron or positron so it can be beta minus or beta plus or the nucleus might release out release the energy to the uh, surrounding that we called as a gamma so due to the higher number of the charges and the particles within the nucleus the nucleus find it difficult to hold them as a result it start to emit out those particles and we call that nucleus or an atom as a radioactive so the radioactive material the material which is emitting out these radiation can be a natural can be artificial like it can be a man made radioactive material or it can be naturally occurring radioactive material so naturally occurring radioactive material there are different radioactive materials and these radiations which we receive from our surrounding what we call we call them as background radiation so right now like you're sitting in your room you're still receiving these radiation amount may vary amount may change from place to place but you are receiving the these radiation and we call that as background radiation and what are the sources of the background radiation radon is a radioactive gas so in our atmosphere we have radon that is also a radioactive so it can emit out radiation and you are receiving from that the ground and the buildings also the material some particles radioactive particles are there that may leads to cosmic radiation from outer space the radiation from the outer space which are also like charged particle gamma b uh, radiation that are there living things due to the presence of carbon 14 is also a radioactive um, atom a radioactive isotope of carbon carbon 12 is not radioactive carbon 14 is radioactive that's how uh, we can now find the age of the plants or the sample using the carbon dating and food and artificial radiation like artificial radiation as the man made i mentioned we are using radiation levels are reported in counts per minute like how many radiations are uh, how many radiations are detected every second or how many counts are produced in a giger miller tube gm tube and that is also known as becquerel denoted by bq so how many radiation are coming in every second or how many atoms decay every second that we can also use the term bq becquerel like 50 radiation for every second so we'll say 50 becquerel so the background radiation the radiation from the surrounding is known as background radiation these are some sources then how to measure the activity of the radioactive source how we'll know how much this radioactive source is active so measuring the activity of a source like this is a source which is emitting out radiation to find the average background radiation first what we have to do the average background radiation can be measured by if we remove the source If you remove the source, radiation from the surrounding are known as average background radiation. So, measuring activity without source 
in place, we'll find the how many background radiations are there. And then what we do, we will place a source in front of this and we'll get how many radiations are coming now. So without, uh, without source of 50 becquerel and with source example 150 BQ. So how many radiations are there from the source or what is the activity of the source? 50, 150 minus 50, so that is equals to 100 BQ. So using this simple experiment, we can find the activity of the radioactive source. The type of radiations which are coming out from the radioactive atom, radioactive nuclei, that is alpha, beta, gamma. What are the characteristics of these radiation? So when the nucleus is having too many neutrons, and not in a like what happened or because many possibilities are there. If a nucleus is having too many neutrons or not enough neutron or just too much energy, it is unstable. So too many neutrons can also make it unstable and not enough neutron also to make a balance that is also make it unstable or it might have lot of energy. It also become unstable. As a result, it emit out radiation. We call that as radioactive decay. So when alpha is emitted out, there are two protons and two neutrons are coming out from the nucleus and alpha particles are known as the helium nuclei because uh, they resemble like this particle resemble with a nucleus of helium, which is having two proton and two neutron and which is having a relatively larger charge and greater ionization. But for beta, it is the electron or positron emitted out from the nucleus when either a neutron or proton changes or decay and they have less ionization and they have a greater range can be stopped by aluminum where gamma is a high frequency electromagnetic radiation which can travel through vacuum and it does not cause much ionization but it is having a longer range to absorb we normally use concrete or lead line boxes are used to stop this gamma radiation this is the summary of the what these radiations are like if alpha particle is there the symbol is a greek alphabet ionizing and tendency to remove electron from an atom is very high because greater mass to charge they are generally moving very slow and the penetration power absorbed by paper of few centimeter in air affected by magnetic field yes because whenever there is a charged particle it is always affected by magnetic field beta it's moderate, it's ionizing power, speed is high, and it can be absorbed by three millimeter of aluminum and deflected by magnetic field because it is a charged particle. Where gamma is very weak, it can travel with the speed of light absorbed by many centimeter of lead or several meters of concrete and the affected by magnetic field. No, why? Because it is the have any charge. When we compare, because these radiations are dangerous, Inside, if for example, if the source is outside your body or inside the body, outside the body, absorbed by the surface layer of a dead skin cell, so no danger. But inside, they're highly ionizing, so the radiation poisoning or cancer is possible. For beta, it is moderate ionizing, so exposure should be minimized. Like if long term exposure is there, then there is a chance that it might cause a cancer. And outside the body, moderate ionizing so closed exposure should be minimized otherwise closely if you are exposed to this radiation it might cause or it might damage gamma minimal ionization they are cancer danger from long term exposure and uh, the same thing for long term exposure inside and outside the body how we can detect this radiation we can use a gm tube or a giger miller tube so we can use a, either a spark counter or ionizing chamber or GM tube cannot be used to detect alpha particle because they cannot penetrate through a mica window. So for if because in a GM tube, this window where the radiation enter, that's called a mica window. This window alpha particles are not able to pass. If they're not able to pass, then how will detect the ionizing capability of the alpha particle inside 
That's why we don't use GM tube for alpha particle. We normally use the spark counter or ionizing chamber or Wilson cloud chamber can be used. Beta radiation can be detected by GM tube and gamma radiation can be detected by the spatial filters that become when expo foggy when exposed to gamma radiation and detect uh, detector are used to detect the presence of ionizing radiation and the trail of these type of radiation is analyzed using a cloud or bubble chamber so we can see the tracks when there is an alpha particle atomic mass atomic mass will decrease by 4 and atomic number will decrease by 2 Whereas beta particle, if it's, it depends on whether it's a beta negative or positive, in beta particle, atomic mass does not change and atomic number increases by one. If it's a negative beta decay, if it was a positive beta decay, atomic mass remains same and atomic number decreases by one. The nature of these radiation and gamma does not have any equation because it's just an emission of energy. The nature of radiation, it is random and spontaneous random means there is no order like we cannot tell how many particles will emit out radiation next moment which particle will emit out radiation next moment or when is the next radiation coming out from the source and spontaneous means it can affect like happen by itself it is not affected by changing the temperature pressure or the state of a radioactive source so if you have a radioactive source in a solid state we convert into liquid or liquid, we convert into gas, it won't affect the amount of radiation, nuclear radiations which are coming out from the source. So this was about uh, the nuclear decay. The next session we will do. The calculation part, activity, half-life and how we can calculate certain values.